Good morning, everybody. Mike's MMA Picks here with your Fight Morning Quick Card Breakdown show brought to you by Bet DSI as well as MMA Oddsbreaker. We're here for UFC Vegas 12, where we have Uriah Hall taking on Anderson Silva in Anderson Silva's retirement fight. We have 11 cards on the docket this evening. Let's kick things off with the first fight of the night, where we have Miles Johns taking on Kevin Natividad. Natividad coming in as the underdog at plus 125, 7,800 in DK. He's got a two inch reach advantage. Miles Johns on the other side of the fight, 10 and 1 record, fighting out of Fortis MMA, 68 inch reach. Got uh, floored by Mario Bautista last time out. 8,400 in DK, minus 155 betting favorite. This line has closed significantly over the past week or so. I see a lot of love out there for Kevin Natividad. He's going to come in here looking to push a pace, get in the face of Miles Johns. Miles Johns is, uh, uh, I suspect, will get some reactive takedowns. The question is going to be, is he going to be able to hold Kevin Natividad down for extended periods of time? Miles Johns is not a high output fighter. So uh, he's going to have Natividad trying to land explosive shots and exchange in the pocket. I suspect we'll see Miles Johns land a few takedowns here, maintain top position. Problem is, He's been swept in a few of his fights, and I understand why this fight is lined so closely at this juncture. I am going to be leaning uh, and picking Miles Johns in this spot. I think he's the better athlete, the stronger fighter, and that first loss to Mario Bautista has lit a fire under his ass. So close fight, very close fight, but I expect Miles Johns to come out here. One other thing. Um, Kevin Natividad was supposed to take on Brian Kelleher about a, a month or so ago, and we saw that didn't pan out. So he's been, he's been through this before, even though this is his debut, he is an experienced fighter with a, with a, um, very, uh, uh appetizing amateur record as well. Looked really good on the amateur scene. Um, give me Miles Johns. Next up, we have Dustin Jacoby taking on Justin Ledette. This fight takes place at 205 pounds. This fight's not expected to go to a decision at minus 145. We have Ledette coming in at 7,300 plus 265 underdog. Ledette gets another shot here after a few consecutive losses. Took losses to uh, Alexa Kamor, Johnny Walker, Alexander Rakic. Now, both of these <clears throat> fighters... They have some work to do. They have some work to do. We saw Jacoby last time out in his uh, in his debut on Contender Series where he gassed out after the first couple of rounds. Jacoby, glory kickboxer, fighting out of Colorado. High praises from uh, Mark Montoya. And he helped Anthony, Anthony Smith get ready for that Rockets fight. And we saw how that went. 8,900 in DK, minus 365 betting favorite for Jacoby. So he's got a 12 and 5 mixed martial arts record. I suspect we're going to see the kickboxer come out here, look to keep things at range, look to land leg kicks and be explosive and cause Ledette problems. The later the fight goes, though, Ledette, we know he's live. He's live out there. This guy had um, Rockich on top of him and was uh, making him look like a fool out there. But Jacoby doesn't have the ground game to cause Ledette problems. I'm going to be picking Jacoby here to get the win and to get it done late inside the distance. Give me Dustin, Dustin Jacoby to win that fight. Next up, we head to 175, 170 pounds where we have Cole Williams taking on Jason Witt. I mentioned that 175 pounds because Cole Williams came in overweight for the second consecutive time at weigh-ins. 7,900 in DK for Cole Williams, plus 120 underdog. The 36-year-old out of the Midwest with an 11-2 record is going to look 
to come in here and grapple and use that extra weight on Jason Witt, who is 17 and 6, 33 years old, 8,300 minus 150 favorite. We've seen Jason Witt does not have a great chin. Is uh, He has James Krause in his corner, and that's always helpful. I <clears throat> see this fight as being a a sloppy grappling fest that's going to go the distance. You watch Jason Witt fight, and he does not throw punches in bunches. He's going to look to stick and move, and Cole Williams is going to be on him like white on rice here. I suspect Williams, this was a uh, egregious, egregious infraction on his part coming in overweight. He's going to look to use that extra weight to pin Jason Witt down and, and grind him out. The problem is, though, Witt comes from a solid camp. <clears throat> he reminds me of a poor man's version of Nate, Nate Marquardt out there. Witt, though, has not faced great competition, and I am going to be picking Jason Witt to win this fight, though not with much confidence. I got to say, you watch his fights through the years, and he does make, he's prone to making mistakes on the feet. And <clears throat> I will be picking Jason Witt to win this fight. Next up, we head to the men's middleweight division where we have Sean Strickland taking on Jack Marshman. Jack Marshman, former British military uh, personnel, 7,100 plus 270 at the betting window. We got Sean Strickland on the other side of the fight, 20 and three record, 9,100 in DK. This line has exploded to minus 370. <clears throat> Strickland, a lot of people uh, may not be aware that he's coming off of a horrific, horrific motorcycle accident where he was knocked unconscious for a few hours and uh, really tore his knee up. So that happened um, a couple of years ago. We haven't seen him since then. And he's coming in here as the much better fighter in all facets of the game, Marshman. Shabazian was able to slice through him like a knife through butter on the ground. Strickland does have a solid ground game, although he seems to be caught in these, gets caught up in these uh, stand-up wars, and he doesn't want to do that against Marshman here, though he might, it might happen. Marshman's another fighter who came in overweight and looked, he did not look good on the scales. Watch back Marshman on the scales. He's breathing heavy and, uh, he looked very soft out there. Uh, Strickland, 29 years of age. So he's the younger fighter, um, has worn out his welcome at a number of fight camps. So you've seen him at Team Quest, and he's been, he's been at a few different camps. Seen him at Kings, at a few other places. Strickland, though, He's going to be my pick here. He's just the, the more well-rounded, better fighter in all aspects of the game. You do have to wonder how that um, accident affects his cardio. I have seen him very active on social media, though. I'm going to be picking Sean Strickland to win. And I think the um, somewhere around the opening, opening line was a much better number. Next up, we have a... Bantamweight matchup. Man, I love this bantamweight division. We've got Victor Rodriguez coming in on very short notice, taking on Adrian Yanez. Yanez coming in uh, minus 460 now. This line also has widened 9,200 in DK, 11-3 and three record. Eight of those wins have come via finish. Victor Rodriguez, ho, ho, 28 years of age, Alaskan fighter, has never seen the scorecards this fight's not expected to go to a decision at minus 250. A few things that jump off the page when you watch Victor Rodriguez fight, he does leave his uh, head out there to get, uh, to get checked. And he is a, he's a wild man. He will push the pace. He will <clears throat> go in for the kill. This is one of the fights that had the, um, during weigh-ins, these guys were jawing at each other. I suspect this is going to be a very entertaining scrap for however long it lasts. Yanez has very crisp strike, striking, has great boxing, really beautiful hands. It's a treat to watch him fight. His ground game may be a problem. 
down the road and also could be potentially a problem here. If you watch Victor Rodriguez's fights, especially his older fights, tries to get his opponents to the ground and then unleash ground and pound on him. Uh, yeah, on, on them. Yanez, though, is going to come in here looking to light Rodriguez up on the feet. I suspect that's what's going to happen. And uh, I'll be picking Yanez to win uh, by, spe by spectacular knockout. Next up, we have the return of Alexander the Great Hernandez taking on Chris Grutzmacher. Grutzmacher, 14 and 3 record, very impressive record. 6,900 plus 315 underdog, gritty, gritty fighter. Has been in there with some, uh, some quality competition. Was in there with uh, Davi Hamos, was in there with Joe Lozon, uh, Chaz Skelly. You watch some of his fights, gritty, gritty fighter. He's taking on somebody who also is an extremely uh, gritty fighter in nature, somebody who's going to his well, somebody who changed camps recently in Alexander Hernandez, 11-3 and three record, 9,300 in DK. So you're going to be paying up for this fella. Minus 435 favorite. He's one of the uh, highest price favorites on the card. Hernandez took that brutal loss to Drew Dober last time out. Uh, we saw him very gun shy against Trinaldo. We saw what happened against Donald Cerrone. And uh, I suspect we'll see Mr. Hernandez come in here very motivated, has a great camp behind him, moved to Colorado, and he's going to be looking to push the pace. <clears throat> this should be a really interesting fight because Grutzmacher doesn't give up on himself, and he uh, has some confidence headed into this bout. This fight is expected to go to a decision at minus 135. I think we'll see Hernandez be the, um, the better wrestler here. And he, I think we're going to see him come in, come in with the much better cardio and he's going to be the quicker fighter. So Grootsmacher is going to be tough to put away in this spot. I, I think we're going to see this play out against the cage and we're going to look, we're going to see Hernandez win a lot of the grappling exchanges and be, be, be very quick out there, especially you look back, uh, his fight against OAM. I think it's going to look, look very similar to that fight. So give me Alexander Hernandez to get back on track and find his winning ways in this spot. Next up, we head to the lightweight division where we have Thiago Moises taking on Bobby Green. Bobby Green has been a man on fire recently, coming in at $9,000 in DraftKings, minus 320 favorite 34 years of age Moises young ripe 25 years old 7200 plus 245 underdog this is a, a guy who really has um fallen in love with his striking and he gets caught up in striking exchanges for the extended periods of time you do not like to see that his fight against Ismagulov um against Michael Johnson against Kurt Holaba all, all those fights he He's losing striking exchanges in many of them, and he has trouble getting fights to the ground. When the fights are on the ground, he's very dangerous. He's got uh, a high-level black belt, and Michael Johnson uh, got caught in a submission in that spot, was winning the fight very handily. Bobby Green here is a – he's got all the momentum. He's got the crisp striking. He has solid wrestling he has great cardio. He's prone to making mistakes, though, also. And, and you have to uh, wonder, if he gets really cocky out there, there could be a situation where he puts himself in harm's way where Moises can capitalize. But in this spot, <clears throat> he, uh, I have to roll with Bobby Green in this spot. I want to cut to the chase here. But question for everybody out there, where does Lando Venata go from here? I wasn't sure if he was going to hang it up after his uh, recent loss. Venata's got to switch camps and, and, and get his butt back on track. Give me Bobby Green to win that fight against Thiago Moises. Next up, we've got heavyweights where we saw Greg Hardy almost miss weight. Uh, he initially did miss weight and then uh, came in at 264 and a half. Six, six and two record professionally. Tremendous athlete, 
8,800 in DK, minus 330, betting favorite, 32 years old, taking on an older fighter, Maurice Green, 9-4 and four record. Man, folks, folks got lucky last time out against Volante. Volante had his number, and whoo, you saw Maurice Green follow Volante to the ground and lock up a submission due to uh, exhaustion in that spot. 7,400 plus 255 underdog here for Maurice Green. As I previously mentioned, 9-4 and four record. Green, not the most athletic fighter out there. And I think that's going to really cause him problems against Greg Hardy, who is starting to become a bit more seasoned out there. He reminds me in his approach to um, uh, Overeem, very, very dangerous, would empty his gas tank, throw caution to the wind early in his uh, career. And we've seen some massive transformations in Alistair's game recently. Big, big fan, especially against Augusto Sakai. Turned into um, Econo Ream in uh, recent days. And Greg Hardy, you watch his fights. He's been more methodical in, in nature, has been uh, taking less risks. And in this spot, that's what he has to do to dispatch of Maurice Green. He can't get up, get caught up in grappling exchanges, can't follow Maurice Green to the ground, um, can pick Green apart at range. and the better athlete should come through and win this fight. This fight isn't expected to go to a decision at minus 265, and I'll be picking Greg Hardy to win in that spot. Though, be aware in DraftKings, um, we saw Greg Hardy initially come out as a, as a killer, but I, I think he's going to be more patient, and he may not put up a, a big DraftKings score. score. Now, you uh, talk about free spots and, and DraftKings lineups, etc. When was the last time you saw a minus 680 favorite priced at 8,200 in DraftKings? That would be Kevin Holland. Kevin Holland coming in here with a 19 and five record, 27 years of age, short notice about taking on <clears throat> Charlie Antivaros. Antivaros is uh, also coming in on very short notice. The Murdoff fight didn't pan out for Holland. Now, Antivaros is coming in. He'll be at a distinct reach disadvantage. Both of these guys are pretty tall. 29 years of age for Charlie, 6,700 in DK. He's a, plus, he's a plus 515 underdog. This is a guy who's been finished six times on the regional scene. He does go for broke in his fights. You watch him uh, willing to take risks, looking, out, looking to land flying knees, et cetera. He's been uh, knocked out six separate times, and that has been all of his all of his defeats. Kevin Holland here, great ground game. Uh, what I love about Kevin Holland's game, I, I don't like how he's uh, he's willing to take risks and put himself in positions where he can get reversed, etc. We don't have to worry about that in this in this spot, but what I like about Kevin Holland is his defensive responsibility on the feet. He's great at range, his strike and defense, and he'll make people miss. In this fight, I just see him being way, way, way too much for Mr. Charlie here. Looks like uh, Charlie came in shape coming out of uh, Fury FC. But I got to say, Kevin Holland should should roll in this spot. And the question is, how many points is he going to put up as chalk and DraftKings? Do you want to be a contrarian in nature and fade in this spot? <laughs> find, another, find another fighter similarly priced. That might be a bit of a challenge. But give me Kevin Holland to win and to win inside the distance. That fight is expected to end inside the distance at minus 425. So... Coming event of the evening, we head to uh, 145 pounders where we have Andre Feely, 21 and 7, veteran fighter, 7,700. This line has, has closed where we're, now we have Feely as a plus 105 underdog. 
taking on Bryce Mitchell. Bryce Mitchell, Thug Nasty, 13-0, 8,500, minus 135 favorite. Now, Mitchell, the uh, much more uh, green fighter, uh, the fighter who is raw on the feet, raw in the stand-up department, does have a uh, tenacious grinding grappling game where he looks to come out and cook opponents the question is Andre Feely had Tonin come in from out of town has fought out of uh, team alpha male is a seasoned veteran somebody who has huge advantages on the feet in this spot has uh great range fighting qualities is on the rise. I really, I've faded Andre Feely in the past. Um, I watched him come out and dominate uh, certain portions of the fight against Miles Jury. We saw he got caught against Jordan and uh, the Bermudez fight. You come in here. Uh, he came in here, and who would have expected Andre Feely to come in and start landing takedowns on Dennis Bermudez? Bermudez had a really tough time taking him down. This is a very fascinating fight. I liked the uh, the number on Andre Feely when he was a much uh, bigger underdog. I think that was priced wrong. And if you got on Andre Feely, I understand why folks would arb and. Uh, come out with some winnings in that spot uh, if they are and, and also uh, looked at that opportunity. Bryce Mitchell coming in here with a boatload of confidence um, has not fought nearly the, the level of competition. I thought uh, Mitchell would be an underdog at this point in the lead up to this fight. I look at this fight. It's a really fascinating matchup. Philly has Mitchell beat in many, many different aspects. There are some unknowns, though. And we saw Brad Katona come out here and take uh, take Mitchell out of there on the ground. And I, I rate uh, Feely a, a better ground fighter than Katona. This fight, though, it's in the smaller octagon. I have a feeling this is, this is going to sound strange. I'm, I'm going to if, – if Mitchell gets to underdog – odds i'm looking i'm I'm not going to make a play on mitchell but i will come out and see and pick mitchell to surprise a lot of folks i think that he when this fight does hit the mat his control on the ground is going to surprise some folks i everything i said has led up to to me picking feely in this matchup though i just have a hunch that 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 Mitchell's going to come out and surprise some folks here. So interesting matchup. I understand why folks are on Feely and um, no play for me. I'm just going to, uh, I'm going to be picking Mitchell though in this, in this spot. Next up main event of the evening where we have Uriah Hall taking on Anderson Silva at 185 pounds. Haven't seen Anderson Silva in quite some time, 45 Years of age, 7,600 in DK, plus 190 at the betting window. And, man, I, wanna, I wonder, he got away from that Ain't No Sunshine walkout song. I wonder if he's going to roll with that to close out the show. Uriah Hall, bit of a head case out there, tough to trust. Coming in with a little bit of a reach advantage, fighting out of a great camp in Fortis, minus 230, minus 230 favorite, 8,600 in DK, has been put against the wall as far as adversity goes, back against the wall. Christoph Jocko was having his way. We've seen other fighters, Antonio Carlos Jr. took him down and just could not lock up the submission. So, Put up a good fight against Paulo Costa for a certain portion of the fight. So 
this is an interesting spot. If Anderson Silva was a little bit younger, had a little bit more gas left in the tank, I would, I would come out and be picking Anderson Silva all day. Hall, you never know what you're going to get with him. The, the Natal fight, I always go back to the Natal fight where he just would not throw. He would not engage. Kept at distance was Natal. You, you look at across the board. Uriah Hall is a, is a great athlete. He, he has great striking, but he just can't put it together. In this spot, I'll be picking Hall, though. I think he has a little bit more in the tank. And this fight's not expected to go to a decision at minus 135. I think the striking exchanges, we should see. This is We've got counter strikers here. He has to – Hall has to come out and start using leg kicks in this spot if he wants to have success. He's got to be – the aggressor. He can't get caught up in trying to counter strike or, or else both of these guys are going to be staring at each other for extended periods of time. And that's a danger when you're playing DraftKings. So I'll be picking, I'll be picking Uriah Hall to win. I want to thank everybody for tuning in today. Um, you can follow me on Twitter at Mike's MMA Picks. You can check out my plays at MMA Oddsbreaker Premium. You can follow me on BetMMA.tips, long-term, proven winner, ready to rock, ready to do this. Have a great day, everybody. We will see you next week for the November 7th card. Don't forget to go out and get what's yours, my friends. Let's do this.